Okay, gentlemen. So we are going to start, inshallah, today. Uh, recording of uh, uh, chapter number eight. Chapter number eight is about uh, project uh, scheduling. Project scheduling. We are going to discuss uh, uh, chapter eight, project scheduling. You know. uh, <clears throat> So allow me to say Bismillah from the Law Salatu was Salam Allah Rasulullah. Rabbi Shahli Sadri wa Yasarli Amri Wahlukta Tamil Lisani Yafkahukali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah to each one of you. So we are going to discuss uh, chapter number eight uh, about uh, developing project scheduling. Okay. How to prepare uh, a schedule. You know? so, so let's move uh, with the simple things. Uh, you know what is schedule? So a schedule is a uh, the definition is a, is a time-based arrangement of activities planned to take place in order to complete the project. Okay. So it's a time-based arrangement of activities okay, planned to take place in order to complete the project uh, according to the given time or on time. Okay. So it's very important, just like uh, you know, students, uh, they need a schedule for the semester, uh, when semester is going to start, when it's going to finish, or uh, what time uh, their midterm uh, uh, mid one will start or what time uh, their mid two is going to start and similarly they want to know about the final exam so this is a schedule is important for the uh, students similarly schedule is important in construction it's very important uh, for every party involved in the construction you know say for example is a Contractor need a schedule to know when and how much labor is needed, you know, what time they have to arrange the labor. So suppliers, uh, vendors, they need to know uh, what, when to deliver the material. Okay. Similarly, subcontractors uh, need to know when they can start their work. So a schedule is important for every party involved in the, in the project, what time they can start their work, uh, when they have to deliver the material, or when they should bring the equipment on site, uh, so what time uh, they should uh, deliver uh, material or uh, bring the labor force uh, so when they are they are part of the project uh, for subcontractor is going to start and when it's going to finish so it is very important for every party a schedule that we should develop a schedule so that we can complete the project uh, according to the contract uh, and according to the time and on time you know so project should not be delay and delaying a project is going to cost money you know to every company so uh, developing schedule uh, schedule involves uh, these things you know in the previous chapter uh, so when we have discussed about project planning and we have discussed in detail uh, how to develop the work breakdown structure in that chapter so those who are uh, you know new to this uh, students or uh, you know engineers uh, they should uh, see the previous video how to develop uh, uh, wbs okay so schedule involves like breaking down the scope of the work into breakdown structure, okay, work breakdown structure. Schedule uh, uh, involves uh, uh, breaking down the scope uh, into work breakdown structure, okay. So this we have discussed in detail in the last chapter. So then uh, um, under the WBS, uh, we will assign those activities, okay so breaking down the work into activities so all the, we will under those uh, work breakdown structure we will uh, um, break down those activities and assign the duration for each activity or resources to each activity so this uh, breaking down the work into activities third thing we should know that how much duration is required for each activity so estimate the duration of uh, each activity so then establish relationship establish a relationship uh, like which activity will finish first uh, and which activity will will follow to the, this activity and next activity and so on you know so make the theme and sequence of those uh, activities and establish a relationship uh, that this will finish first and next uh, this activity will start and after this this activity will start so like we have to build the build the piling work first and then make a pile cap or foundation and then build the column you know, so it's to make the theme you know, relationship finding earliest and latest uh, start times okay so the once we have uh, developed this uh, network schedule we will find the early start time and the late start time in the ne network diagram uh, then uh, from that we will find the 
total float and once we know the total flow so we can find the critical path uh, uh, of the schedule so this will be like the uh, what uh, schedule involves uh, in developing a schedule we have to follow this you know um, first breakdown structure then uh, break down the work into activities estimate the duration of activity establish their relationship uh, and find the early start time and late start time of all activities in the network diagram then find the total float and finding the critical path uh, uh, in the schedule so let's move forward uh, estimate activity duration okay so duration uh, estimation of duration is very important you know it's uh, very tricky and uh, because if i ask the, how much time this will uh, this work will take so maybe some people will say different you know so it's uh, a simple definition of activity is the amount of work that can be identified so that we know what it involves and what, uh, when it starts and finishes so we should know that uh, this activity we can identify that work you know say for example we can say it's uh, just a foundation or we can say this uh, plastering work or brick work uh, uh, so um, fall ceiling work uh, okay. so, um, and, uh, fixing of doors and window uh, fixing uh, um, making flooring okay so we can divide uh, uh, work uh, split the work into uh, uh, you know activities uh, so that we know what uh, what it, it involves and when it's going to start and finish and how much time it's going to take okay now activity duration is dependent on many things uh, so some of the things we are going to discuss uh, like what is the nature of work the nature of work uh, uh, or nature of project uh, uh, so like pouring concrete whether we are pouring concrete on the first floor ground floor or we are on the first floor or we are pouring concrete on the 60th floor you know so it's a uh, nature of work is uh, depending upon the complexity of the work duration will change so then uh, quantity of work the iteration is also dependent on the quantity of work say for example is uh, are we going to cast a concrete 50 cubic meter or we have the quantity of uh, 200 cubic meter so it's, uh, if we use the same resources then we need more time to finish uh, uh, casting concrete for a 200 cubic meter again it's uh, a construction technique used for the task okay, so activity duration is dependent on the uh, technique used for the uh, task to execute the task like we are uh, uh, are we using tower crane uh, with buckets uh, to pour the concrete or we are going to use a, a concrete pump uh, to, to lift the concrete uh, on the 60th floor so uh, what technique we are going to use that's also going to matter in the in, in the duration of the work so say for example also resources used to perform the work okay this also duration will also be dependent on the resources used to perform the work say for example a resources may able to take the labor force a resource if we take the labor force or there are uh, 20 masons are working or only 10 masons are working or five masons are working okay so how many resources we have employed you know so this will also duration will be depending uh, on that or if take another example uh, another resource like uh, equipment uh, so are we working with uh, with one backhoe uh, excavator to excavate the excavation or we are working with three excavators uh, uh, our backhoe to excavate that uh, excavation you know? so uh, if we increase the resources we can reduce the time you know? working hours for the resources okay so this is a duration also uh, is uh, dependent on the working hours uh, for the resources yeah. meaning is uh, are we going to work uh, just in one shift uh, eight hours per day are we are working in two shift uh, are we are working around the clock uh, at 24 hours okay so if we are working in like 24 hours uh, on that work so the um, duration um, of the project will reduce so duration we count uh, in calendar days okay in calendar days like the month uh, days um, how much a duration for the project is required you know so usually duration is always uh, expressed in terms of number of days 
and they are uh, like a uh, multiple of seven so we know that uh, how many weeks uh, we have to work on the project so we keep it a uh, number of days and uh, in terms of weeks you know how many weeks this semester or how many weeks required for completion of the project so let, let's move forward with the, the um, estimating activity duration there are other things uh, durations uh, are expressed in hours days or weeks so generally we express the duration in number of days but we can also use weeks uh, or if we need more accuracy as required for something so we can uh, maybe we can use hours also uh, on some of the so duration is generally expressed uh, in a uh, whole number of days uh, like working days okay so activities with the zero duration are called milestones okay? so milestone we fix some kind of milestone on the project like what is the start time milestone and this is the finish time of the project uh, are there are some uh, interesting uh, point of interest in the progress schedule so that will also we can fix uh, with the zero time as a milestone like uh, when uh, when are we going to complete the um, you know ground floor and when are we going to complete the first floor or we are going to complete the second floor third floor fifth floor okay so we can fix uh, you know uh, in high rise building uh, milestone you know, and that uh, that will fix that we should uh, try to make target that we have to finish this work until this time okay so those are uh, uh, point of interest in the progress schedule let's move forward with this uh, uh, now uh, estimating duration is uh, you know is uh, very tricky is uh, so sometimes the most appropriate method is that we can use the uh, productivity data okay so productivity data is uh, like uh, available online like unit prices are available productivity of crew members uh, is uh, data is available online so if we take uh, like example here is a productivity for a carpenter fabricating and fixing footing form work so footing form work uh, three uses for each plywood uh, so the, uh, like one carpenter uh, um daily, uh, daily output will be uh, is uh, 470 uh, square foot uh, contact area per day so daily output uh, will be um, four, 470 um, uh, 470 square foot contact area per day so it means one carpenter uh, can fix uh, this much uh, form work form work uh, they can place uh, uh, fix uh, the form work for the footing okay so by experiment this data is uh, uh, available uh, online like from uh, from rs means uh, they, they provide this data online so we can take help uh, that what are the uh, productivity data you know uh, so we can use that uh, for estimating the duration so let's see uh, in the next slide how we are going to estimate the, the duration estimating activity duration estimating duration is not easy okay so it's uh, this is the uh, you know that's why we have a deterministic schedule and probabilistic schedule so it's uh, sometimes uh, duration is the more complicated so there are many ways for scheduling uh, process for example using productivity rate so we can use productivity rate to estimate the duration now the uh, let us take the example that we are going to uh, fix the form work for a continuous wall footing for a continuous wall footing so productivity rate uh, from rs means is available that is a uh, productivity for one carpenter is a 470 square foot contact area per day okay. in one day uh, that one carpenter can fix uh, uh, 470 square foot uh, of that form work okay, for the wall footing now this uh, quantity of total quantity of that form work is uh, there are 6000 square foot contact area so this we know the quantity so now it's very easy to find duration as a quantity over productivity so we know the quantity is 6000 and per day output is uh, uh, from one worker is uh, 470 so if we divide uh, the quantity with the, the daily output of that uh, carpenter so this means a carpenter need 12.76 days uh, to finish this much quantity so if we use two uh, carpenter or two, two 
two, two members uh, of the crew. So then we can divide it by two. So it, it will be uh, 6.39 or we can make a whole number. Okay, we keep uh, uh, always uh, duration in whole numbers uh, uh, of days, number of days. So we need seven days uh, working time. Seven days working time with two carpenters uh, uh, to finish this much work uh, of fixing uh, uh, 6,000 uh, square foot uh, contact area for, for work. Uh, for the uh, continuous wall footing. Okay. So the uh, seven days means uh, if we take, uh, uh, you know, working week is five days and uh, we have a, a Friday and Saturday is holiday or in other countries, you know, there is a uh, Saturday and Sunday is holiday. So two days are holidays, five days are working week. So means five days working means, so and then uh, for this work, uh, you need seven days, okay? So it means you need, uh, uh, you know, uh, five days means one week. Okay? So do you need one week and two days uh, to finish this work? Okay? So uh, we is uh, expressed in working days. So for this work, uh, like uh, five days working week. Okay, five days means one week. Okay? Five days are working one week because uh, you can imagine that uh, um, a Saturday and Sunday is holiday. So remaining are five days uh, working days. So for this work, we need seven days to finish this work. Okay. So it, means, it means we need more than one week. Okay. Uh, we need seven days of working days to finish this work. So this is how we are going to calculate the uh, duration of the activity. The duration of the activity. So we know for each from the drawings, we know the quantity of work and the productivity rates are available online. So we, from each quantity, we can estimate the time for each uh, um, work you know, uh, so in your uh, project. So let's uh, know there are a number of types of, uh, you know, uh, scheduling we use. One is we call it a bar chart. Okay. A bar chart was developed by Henry Gantt in 1910. So first time this uh, scientist really and began to develop the bar chart. That's why sometimes people call it bar chart or uh, gun chart. So it's a bar chart is a, a non-network scheduling technique. Non-network scheduling technique. It's not a, a network. So length of the bar represents the planned duration. So the length of the bar is going to represent the uh, duration. Uh, so bar charts acts uh, as both uh, planning scheduling model, like length of the bar represents the planned duration. For example, there is a, in, in the next slide we are going to have the tickets. Uh, so there is a, uh, like four weeks or four months. Okay? So now these uh, bar chart, uh, we can use them as a planning scheduling model or we can use them as a, a reporting control model, or we can use these bar chart as a percent complete scale, okay? How much uh, percentage of the work is, uh, is complete, okay? So let's see, we are going to see those, uh, those figures, uh, inshallah, mm, uh, so how they are going to act like a planning scheduling model with very simple thing. Uh, like here is a figure A, 8.2 figure A just represent uh, on the X sector is a, a number of weeks or months, okay? So this work is a, 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 is a week number one, two, three, four, and uh, on the Y axis is the project work items or activities. So here we just uh, draw one activity that is going to take uh, four weeks or four months. Uh, uh, and then uh, in the B, we are going to see that uh, how much, uh, you know, when we draw this activity that our work is uh, spread over four months. Now, whatever the work has been completed, uh, so we can make color. Uh, and uh, say, for example, in B, they say that 50% uh, work is complete. 50% okay? work is complete. So we can say upper is our uh, planning uh, uh, model, uh, planning scheduling model, and lower is a uh, like we can say it's a control model, how much work uh, is complete, whether we are making, uh, you know, completing the project faster or we are uh, behind schedule. So this is like help us in controlling or it's also going to tell us how much work is complete. So say for example here, 
uh, it's going to mention that 50% work is complete, so it means uh, half of the project is uh, uh, is complete for this activity. You now this, uh, so it's a um, you know, uh, plan focus uh, model and then work focus uh, or it's a uh, percent work uh, complete model or uh, reporting control model. So B is a uh, reporting control model and percent uh, complete uh, model. A work focus and A is our planning model. So this is simple example. Let's see another example is a you know, in this uh, uh, figure eight point three. We have a uh, see uh, you know if we see the figure A eight point three A. So it's a bar chart uh, model. It's our planning. You know, um, so on X axis the uh, time is given in months. So we have uh, um, starting time zero and then month number one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And on Y axis, we have the work items. We have the work items. So now there are three work items, three activities. Activity A start from time zero for four months. And for uh, activity B, uh, start uh, after, uh, after one month, uh, so it's uh, again for four months, but starting time is at month num after month number one, and then to finish at uh, month number uh, and going to finish at month number uh, five. Okay, so it's uh, um, uh, so activity B and then activity C is just one month. Okay, starting time is two and finishing is uh, is three. So just one month. So here you see activity A is for four months. Activity B is also four months, but the starting time is after one month and finishing time is uh, at month number five. So similarly uh, for activity C is just one month. Activity C is just one month. So now in the um, second uh, figure B, we have uh, see how much work is completed. So we are going to make color, you know. So, so this will be like our reporting control model. Uh, day by day, how much work for activity A is completed. So we are going to make color and similarly for B. So now they, they have, um, you know, in the legend, they put here percent work completed at end of second month, okay. So how much work is uh, uh, complete at month number two? That means we are uh, at month number two, and then we are vertically when we see that uh, work A is 40% complete, and work B is 15% uh, complete, but we are at month number two. So uh, this indicates that uh, we are behind schedule, you know, we are behind schedule. So two is, uh, in front, but this line uh, only A is 40% complete, B is 15% uh, complete. So second legend, uh, they say percent work completed at end of third month. Okay, so uh, at end of third month, so it means we are uh, at the end of third month. Uh, uh, how much work uh, uh, A is complete as seventy percent, okay? and how much work of B is complete as fifty percent, okay? and C is also at end of third month. C is also fifty percent complete. But in the planning is that this work C should have finished, you know, by the end of uh, uh, month number three. So it should have finished, but it is a complete 50%. So we can say that uh, work C is behind schedule. Work C is uh, behind schedule. And work uh, A is also a little bit behind. And work B is uh, almost on, on schedule at month number three, 50% complete. Okay. So by this way, we can say that uh, upper, uh, you know, A is our planning planning model and uh, B is our planning and control model. So we are going to see whether we are uh, doing fast or we are going slow. You know? So in this case, uh, it's going to tell us also that uh, how much percentage of the work is complete. So we can report the progress to our head office, to the to our uh, you know uh, headquarter project director, or to the client uh, how much work is uh, uh, complete. So we call it a percent uh, uh, complete scale, okay? our reporting control model. So it's uh, uh, we have the um, uh, you know planning model, and we have uh, we is uh, uh, updating uh, control focus. Uh, and also percent complete. So this is like we can uh, report, use bar chart uh, uh, for uh, controlling our uh, work. 
So let's see now, next, next we are going to discuss uh, if these bar chart, they are connected, you know, connected bar chart is referred as a bar net. So we will see in the next figure, uh, 8.4, uh, for they are going to take a gas station project or a petrol pump or gasoline, uh, uh, gasoline station. So uh, building up the gasoline project, they have a number of uh, uh, breakdown of the activities uh, and their sequence, they have eight activities and total duration in that schedule is 20 weeks. Uh, so they, um, then the activity erect building structure is connected to two activities, uh, exterior finishes and uh, uh, construct roof. Uh, then activities one, two and three are complete by the end of uh, week number 10. So see these, uh, how these things are applicable on, on this uh, bar net. So first thing is this is bar net, you know, that all the bars, they are interconnected with these uh, um, arrows, okay. For these uh, arrows, we have eight activities, start of the um, project, pouring uh, the foundation, uh, then third is uh, erecting the building structure, constructing of walls, uh, okay, uh, for this building, uh, uh, building structure. Then uh, when we complete this building structure, uh, so uh, activity three, then we, uh, uh, once walls are complete, so then we can start two activities together. They, uh, in the schedule is shown, two activities can be started together. Like uh, we can construct the roof, we can also have the exterior finishes we can start. Okay. So we can start exterior finishes and, uh, uh, and construct the roof together. Okay. But, um, and then it's, uh, you know, uh, like uh, after the, the sixth activity, so uh, interior finishes and electrical mechanical work also can start together. Okay? So this is like uh, uh, no. uh, act activities uh, one, two, and three are complete by the uh, end of uh, week number uh, uh, week number uh, ten. Okay? So we can say that uh, uh, activity one is uh, for six weeks, uh, uh, two is uh, will complete at the end of week number eight, and three will complete at the end of week number ten. Okay, so this is like they they have the dotted line are also shown. These these dotted lines show the uh, free float. Okay, uh, free float. Uh, uh, that uh, this activity, say for example, uh, exterior finishes, uh, this need only three days, but we can also delay for uh, until completion time. Uh, similarly, activity number seven, interior finishes, uh, so it uh, requires three days to complete, but there are two days, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, free float is available that uh, it will, uh, we can delay this activity for two days, uh, um, you know, or we can complete any time. So it's available time available uh, for um, with us uh, uh, to complete this uh, uh, activity. So this is like, uh, and uh, this, uh, actually this is uh, like total float uh, is available with us. The float is available with us. Uh, the project manager, he can delay these activities for a uh, couple of days if he wants to. You know or you can complete according to the uh, schedule as they have been shown in this uh, schedule. So main thing is that we should, we call it a bar, uh, bar net, okay? because all these activities are interconnected. Okay? All these activities are interconnected. Let's move to the next, uh, you know, so what we have seen from the bar net that uh, logic uh, or some scheduling uh, logic is very important. Okay? So to develop a schedule, uh, the logical sequence or schedule logic uh, uh, that relate the various activities to one another must be developed. Okay? So this is a very important that we should have a, uh, a sequence of work. We know how the actual work uh, or how uh, the actual project will be constructed, you know, how the actually, which activity should complete first uh, and next uh, and so on. Okay. So there are a number of figures, uh, they are shown here in 8.5, figure 8.6, figure 8.7, 8.8, 8.9. So they are like, uh, you know, uh, they are going to discuss one example. So inshallah, we will go one by one with each figure and the next slide, let's uh, go with figure uh, 8.5. So this is a, a, a you know, a schematic view of the peers. Uh, uh, in, in A and figure B is uh, going to show that uh, uh, exploded view of those those peers, you know, split up of those peers. So we have here, uh, you know, um, uh, pile one, pile two, or peer one, peer two, peer five, peer four. So it's uh, then header one, header, 
two header three, and then there is a deck slab one, deck slab two, deck slab three. Okay. So in the exploded view, is uh, all the elements I have shown uh, separately, like P one, P two, P three, P four, P five, P six. So then uh, first we should complete. Uh, <coughs> If we complete peer peer one and peer two, so then we can uh, build a header one. If we complete peer three and peer four, then we can build a header two. So if we complete peer five and peer six, so then we can uh, build a header number three. Okay. So once these uh, header one and header two are complete, then we can cast a deck slab for a, a DS one. And once uh, this these uh, header two and three are complete, uh, so we can cast also a deck slab. Uh, uh, two. Okay. So this gives us uh, the the sequence, okay, logic uh, in actual work. Uh, what will be the uh, um, logical sequence of those activities? Uh, or scheduling logic, logic. All the activities are uh, interrelated with uh, one another. So let's move to the next. Uh, same uh, this uh, what we have seen in the previous figure. So it's uh, uh, in this uh, we are going to just put the conceptual model of peer uh, components. So they are uh, peer components are shown that P1, P2, uh, header one. Similarly, P3, P4, header two, and then slab one. So then next is a peer five, peer six, uh, and header three, and then slab two. So this is a conceptual model of those here is shown. And with this figure, we will move forward how the sequence should be. Like uh, we have to construct, uh, uh, you know, how the sequence will go. Like we will build first uh, uh, peer one, and then we can build, uh, so we can draw the diagram, uh, peer, peer, build peer one, and then build peer two. Okay. And after that, we will build a header one. So this gives us the, how the sequence of construction will be for these uh, these peers. So now all these peers are shown, like uh, here, uh, same uh, um, in this figure eight. So this is a, a conceptual model for the peer all uh, component, how they are related with these arrows. So it means we will build peer one first and peer two, and then we will have uh, header one. Okay. Similarly, we will build peer three and peer four, and then we will build header two. Okay. So once uh, header one and header two are complete, we can build a uh, slab one. So similarly, uh, we should build a uh, uh, peer five and peer six, uh, and then we can build a uh, uh, header three. And then we, uh, once uh, header two and header three are complete, so we can build a uh, uh, slab two. So this is like uh, for the um, you know uh, structure, but if we take the under these peers uh, like the piling work uh, under these peers, uh, so then uh, if we have to do the piling work uh, under these peers, uh, so then uh, it is uh, up to the contractor uh, that how they are going to do the uh, piling work. You know? So may, they may make a sequence of work uh, like the um, alternate row piling driving. Uh, and they will start uh, piling from uh, peer number one and then move to peer number two and then from peer two to they move to peer number four and then come to peer number three uh, and then from peer three to move uh, peer number five and peer number six. So this is the way that the contractor uh, adopted his uh, work sequence uh, to complete all the piling work. Or they, they choose uh, that uh, uh, on depending upon the site uh, location and uh, availability of the site, how the piling rig will move. Uh, so they they complete the uh, peer uh, um, you know in in sequence. Uh, they can drive uh, piling on one side uh, in sequence uh, in a row. Like they complete the piling work for pile one. Uh, they, um, then they move uh, after a file um, from peer one to doing the piling work at peer number three. And then after uh, peer number three, they move to the peer number five. And from peer number five, they move to peer number two on the other side. So from peer number two, to, they move to peer four and peer six. So similarly, uh, another way, they probably um, in the C figure, they, they they show that they have started their work for piling work from peer number one and then they go to peer number two. But there was uh, some problem and some uh, mishap has occurred or maybe the um, you know the borehole collapse or uh, piling uh, rig uh, 
uh, their uh, drilling equipment has uh, you know broken so uh, they have problem and then they move from pier uh, 2 to pier 4 okay and then they from pier 4 they they, uh, they go to pier 3 so in the meantime they were uh, correcting that uh, uh, mishap what has happened at pier number 2 you know? then they come back again to pier number 2 and they have completed this uh, uh, job at pier number 2 you know piling work but then they move from pier number 2 to pier 6 and pier 5 so it shows that this will be the tertiary work depending on the contractor can adopt uh, the sequence uh, uh, the way they are going to do the piling work uh, whatever is a convenient uh, way for the uh, contractor uh, to do this piling work but for as long as uh, we are uh, uh, like a planning engineer, we are going to calculate the time for the um, this uh, all these years. So it means uh, they know uh, they want to know that how much time is required uh, for driving or uh, building the pile and finishing the piling work uh, under tier number one. Okay. How much time is required for finishing the piling work uh, for pier number one, and how much time required for finishing the piling work for pier number two. So they can join all these circles uh, and uh, it will tell us the total time required uh, to complete the piling work under these uh, peers. Okay. So for, for the uh, you know, person like uh, who is going to work uh, in scheduling or on Pramavira, uh, Microsoft project for the scheduling. So he, he, if he has clear that uh, generally it takes uh, uh, this much time to complete uh, piling work for one peer, so he can combine all those and he can find the time for the whole uh, uh, work for the pile driving. Also, if they are, uh, you know, um, maybe they are uh, uh, driven piles, uh, like uh, concrete piles, or they are spun piles, or they are, and they have, uh, you know, uh, bore piling work. Uh, so whatever the work will be, uh, they are depending upon that how much uh, time is required to complete the piling work under uh, each year. So they can find the total time for the piling work. So this is like a how we make a, a logic uh, for the scheduling logic. Uh, sequence is very important, uh, you know, to draw the uh, network diagrams uh, and to know the sequence of work. Now we will go with the simple, simple uh, examples. Uh, so we are going to start, and the next slide is a network diagram. Okay, or we call it critical path method uh, CPM diagram. Uh, critical path method uh, CPM diagram. So we call it, uh, 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 you know, deterministic network scheduling technique. We call it a deterministic network scheduling technique. Okay, because there are other techniques also, like a, a part uh, is a uh, part uh, program evaluation and review technique. So that technique is probabilistic, okay? probabilistic. But this uh, 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 critical path method is. Uh, deterministic uh, network scheduling technique. So we are going to discuss uh, uh, this uh, uh, critical path method on deterministic uh, network scheduling technique. So for this, uh, we take help of those diagram. Okay. So of, uh, you know, uh, methods uh, that we use, uh, one we call as uh, arrow diagram or activity on arrow, or arrow networks uh, or arrow diagrams. Okay. Uh, second, we call it uh, activity on node. So our node network, uh, our node diagram. Okay. So uh, um, third, uh, sometimes some people, uh, you know, uh, keep separate or uh, the uh, node diagram or precedence diagram, they consider same. Okay. So precedence uh, network uh, or precedence diagram, but we will uh, hear uh, when we discuss this chapter, so uh, in the precedence diagram, they are more complicated that we will use the relationship scheduling. Okay? Relationship scheduling, um, like the not only uh, finish to start, but start to start, and uh, and there is a lag time also. So in the precedence diagram, uh, like the premise that I use the precedence diagram network. So it's uh, we are going to learn all three, you know, uh, uh, in detail. So um, make practice of how to draw the arrow diagram or how to draw the node diagram or how to draw the precedence diagram. Okay. So each project has one start and one end time. Okay. So this uh, like we have to consider a project and uh, they are always unique and uh, they have consumed resources and they have 
uh, start time and finish time for the projects. Okay. So, uh, and scheduling uh, important is for us is that there is a, for each project there is a start time and there is a finish time. So let's move to the diagrams. Uh, in this slide, we are going to learn about the arrow networks or arrow diagram. Okay. So um, what is the definition? What is the arrow diagram or arrow networks? Uh, it's a method of uh, drawing network schedule using arrows to represent activities. So activity is represented by arrow. Okay. Sometimes we call it activity on arrow diagram, activity on arrow. So activity will be represented by the arrow and there will be a starting node and finish node. Okay. So then in these arrow diagram, we also use dummy activities. Okay. Dummy, uh, an activity with zero time duration used to express logic. Okay. Dummy activity is there. Uh, with zero time duration, it's an imaginary activity shown with the dotted line and uh, must uh, put the arrow for this uh, dummy activity. For the other activities, if you put uh, the arrow, is okay. If you don't put the arrow, it will be fine. But for the dummy activity, uh, so you must have to put the arrow. So in let's see the general activity, uh, how the notation is uh, in arrow diagram uh, for the general activity. So we have activity with starting node is a generic activity. Starting node is I, the start node. And arrow represents the activity. Okay, so activity is represented by arrow. And J is the end of the node. Okay, so it means activity is up to I is the starting point, J is the finish point of the activity and activity is represented by arrow. So that's why we call it activity on arrow or arrow diagrams. Okay. So now we will try to draw the arrow networks uh, with simple example. Here we have uh, activity, list of activities is given A, B, C, D, E, and then IPA is given, IPA stands for immediately preceding activities immediately preceding activities so what are the like previous activities okay, proceed, uh, what are previous activities like what activity is before a for b is what activity is before a b is a okay so in this uh, list uh, like we can say that uh, for a activity a there is ip is nothing okay so it means this is the starting activity B is uh, activity B will be after A and activity C will be after A and activity D will be after uh, B and activity E will be after C and D. Okay. So with this list, uh, we can start the arrow diagram. Okay. Here is the arrow diagram like uh, uh, activity A, IP is nothing. So it means this is the starting activity. So uh, node 10 is the starting point for A and 20 is the finish point for A. Then B and C both are starting after A because IPA for B and C is A. Okay. So it's uh, active B and C, both activities are starting after A. So from when A is going to finish, then B and C are going to start. So we start uh, from the same uh, node, like uh, we, we put the uh, number 20. Uh, so we, from 20, we start B and C, uh, two activities and then activity D is after B, okay, so finish node for B is 30, then after B we start the activity D, okay, and uh, so um, then is uh, uh, activity E is after, uh, E is after C and D, so it means C and D, they will finish at one common node uh, and that we have uh, categorized here with 40, so uh, then Activity E is uh, going to start uh, when activity C and D both are complete. Then activity E will start and E is going to finish at 50. So the number inside the nodes are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. You, you can write maybe 5, 10, you know, so this is not important. Uh, this is like just to mention the start node and finish node. Okay. Uh, we just uh, try to put number uh, in gaps uh, so that if we have to go in scheduling on computer, you know, in more detail, so we can put in, get more activities uh, more detail. Like we have the foundation, so we can break the foundation into fixing of uh, 
uh, form work, fixing, fixing up reinforcement, fixing up form of form work, or casting up concrete. You know, we can split uh, activities, uh, uh, you know, foundation in more detail. Okay? Or even just uh, fixing up reinforcement, we can also split you know, more like uh, uh, cutting, uh, cutting, bending uh, of the rebars, or you know, then uh, uh, transporting and fixing that uh, on site. Uh, so. Um, making the proper cover and these things. So we can split activities in more detail, you know. So that's why we put these notes in gaps. If we have to go back and split this part of the schedule into more detail. So these are number 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, they are the, like we put these numbers. But the main thing is activity is shown by arrow. So we draw the arrow diagram. So in this, uh, like this is a simple diagram. But let's move to the next uh, diagram is, uh, so before moving to the next diagram, uh, we, uh, I would like to mention that uh, there is a, you know, a dummy activity that we have learned before, that how uh, dummy activities we are going to use, arrow diagram and use of dummy. So the law, you know, there are methods for drawing the arrow diagram that the two tasks cannot share the same start and end nodes. Okay? Two activities cannot start from the same uh, node and cannot finish at the same node. So like here, uh, the two tasks B and C, they are uh, sharing the same starting point and same end point. Okay? So B, um, uh, B and C, start. they are starting from two and they are going to end at, at three. You know? So if this happened, this is wrong you know, in, in, uh, in arrow diagram and computer get confused. You know, we can say that uh, because two activities uh, uh, starting from the same point and finishing at the same point. So in this case, we have to add uh, a dummy activity, you know, so that to make uh, uh, this, uh, uh, satisfy this law that two tasks cannot share the same start and some same uh, end points. Okay? Two tasks cannot share the same start and 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 nodes. Okay, so um, we uh, we are going to introduce a dummy activity. Okay, like here in this uh, example, same uh, that previous diagram in B and C. So now we have inserted this red activity uh, with the dotted line. Uh, it's a dummy activity. Okay, so. Um, a, a, a new node is inserted to give C a different finish node than to B, okay? So like uh, for B in our starting point is two and finish point is four. For C is starting point is two and finish point is uh, three. Okay? So the dummy task is inserted to preserve the immediate uh, predecessor of D. So predecessor of uh, D is uh, one is B and another is dummy activity. Okay? So um, this is like we use the uh, dummy activity uh, to uh, satisfy this uh, law uh, for drawing the arrow diagram. In this case, it is necessary to insert dummy activities as broken lines, which are activities with zero duration to maintain the correct logic. These lines do not represent any activity, but are simply a logic link, okay? So they are like imaginary activities. Uh, if on site is nothing, but on paper it's a, these are like a dummy activity. Now we will apply this uh, rule uh, for drawing the ne next network diagram, okay? So here is the uh, example that we have the IPA list uh, activities, A, B, C, D, E, F, D, H, I, and then uh, immediately preceding activities like previous activities uh, for, for activity A, is, uh, IP is nothing. For activity B, IP is nothing. For activity C, IP is nothing. So it means these three activities, uh, they are going to start together, you know? uh, and they are the starting activities. So D will be after A, and E will be after A and B, and F will be after A, B, and C, and G will be after E and F. And H activity will start when uh, D and G are complete, and I activity will start when D and G are complete. So if we have this list of activities, then we can draw the network diagram. So what we have seen in the previous uh, list uh, that uh, there are three activities, A, B, C, so they are the starting activities. So we put that uh, from the same node, uh, they are going to three activities, A, B, and C are going to start. 
then D will start uh, after uh, A. So when A is complete, so we are going to put uh, activity D. Then it's uh, activity E will start uh, when A uh, when A and B are complete. So see if we connect this A and B at the same point, it means that these two activities A and B will have the same starting point and uh, the same finish point for both the activities. To avoid this, uh, so we have inserted a, a D1 dummy activity so that uh, finish time for uh, A will be 20 and for B will be 30. Like no other, so we have inserted a dummy activity. So it means, uh, but E will start when both A and B are complete. So we have introduced a dummy and then E will start. So this uh, dummy activity will take uh, back to A. So it means the work A is complete, B is complete, then E is going to start. <laughs> then F is going to start when these three activities, uh, A, B, and C are complete. So F activity. So it's when uh, this dummy D, dummy D2 will take us back that A is complete, B is complete, and then activity C is complete, then F is going to start. Okay, so we have uh, dummy D2. Okay. And then it's, uh, mm, yeah. so that's why we put here dummy D2 that uh, B and C should not have the same starting point and same finish point. Okay. So that's, in this, this was that we need to put dummy D2. Okay. And then once, uh, so we have F, uh, E and F, uh, so then after F is the activity G, activity G will be when E and F, they are complete, then G, then G will start. Okay. So we can join uh, E and F at a common node at 50, then uh, activity G will start. H is, uh, uh, H is going to start when, uh, when D and G are complete. Okay. So H will start when D and G are complete. So we join these two activities, uh, D and G at common order at 60, and then H is going to start. Okay. I is also going to start when um, D and G are complete. So when D and G are complete, so I will start. So now again, two activities, H and I, they have started from the same node. And they have to finish uh, uh, so uh, at 80. So, but uh, we can we cannot like join together. The two activities will start the same point and finish at the same point. So that's why we have to introduce uh, dummy D3 here, so that uh, for H uh, it's going to finish at the node 70, and I is going to finish at node 80. So by this way, we have completed the. Uh, you know, the, uh, we have completed the uh, no, node diagram uh, all. But so now in this node diagram, there are three dummies. Okay? So uh, remember that uh, when everybody will draw the node diagram, so it, dummies will be same. You know? There should not be extra dummies. You know? So uh, and, uh, and every engineer or every student when they draw the uh, arrow diagram, so number of dummies should be same, you know, if there is in this diagram, like three dummies are required, so it should be three dummies, okay? It's possible that you can put D3 on H side or you can put on I side, okay? Uh, activity I. So uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is possible, you know, but um, there should not be more than three dummies, okay? So everybody will have the same uh, number of dummies uh, in the network diagram when they do uh, draw the diagram. Uh, so with this, uh, we learn how to draw the um, uh, arrow diagram. Uh, okay, uh, arrow diagram from the uh, list of activities is given to us. We can draw the network schedule based on activity on arrow. Okay, and these nodes, uh, what the numbering inside is uh, that I have explained before: 10, 20, 30, 40. You know, we can keep this maybe five, ten, whatever, uh, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So you can also put this way. Uh, these, these numbering, this is not important, but activity must be shown by arrow, okay, with the starting node and end node. Okay, so activity on arrow, uh, remember the general notation for the arrow diagram. Similarly, we do the next uh, CPM calculations, uh, we call it CPM calculation, like we have to find the, uh, you know, uh, where we should write the, uh, you know, this general notation. Uh, like uh, we have the activity starting point is I finishing is J. Okay, then 
at the top we write activity uh, represented by arrow and below is the d is the duration then es we call it early start es stands for early start time uh, ef is early finish time okay uh, ls is late start time uh, okay and uh, lf is a late finish late finish time or late finish time or late, late finish or late finish date okay some people say okay early start date early uh, early finish date okay late start date late finish date this is also possible you know so but it's they are early start early finish late start late finish okay so remember how to write uh, on the on the arrow where to write uh, es uh, early start, early finish, late start, late finish. Okay, early start, early finish at the above of the arrow, and late start, late finish at the bottom of the arrow. And then we write uh, total float. TF stands for total float. Okay, so we'll discuss this uh, how much that uh, time available with the project manager that we cannot delay the project. Okay? So total float. Uh, how to calculate total float is uh, it's uh, late start minus early start or we can calculate a late finish minus early finish. Okay, so both way we will get the same result. Um, and similarly, uh, free float, okay, free float is uh, written at the, you know, above uh, FF, uh, free float. So free float is uh, like, uh, it's linked between two activities, okay, linked between the two activities. So here they say that uh, uh, early, early start of the following activity, early start of the next activity, early start of B means uh, early start of the next activity. So if there are two next uh, following activities or next activities uh, or uh, successor activities are two, so we will take uh, which one is minimum, okay and then minus early finish of the previous activity early finish of a okay. so by this way we will calculate the um, free float okay. so inshallah then the next uh, we are going to uh, we are going to apply this uh, on this uh, diagram so say for example this diagram is given okay. this diagram is given so then is uh, If this uh, diagram is uh, is given, uh, so then we can, uh, uh, you know, um, like there are activity A. So activity A duration is five. Activity B duration is three. Activity C duration is six. Okay. So these three activities are going to start together from the same node. Okay? These are the starting activities. So their IP is uh, nothing. Okay. Now. Um, activity um, uh, D is after A and B. Okay. Activity D is after A and B. Duration for activity D is five days. And activity, so because these two activities, you know, so we have to insert a dummy, you know, so that their starting and finish time, uh, uh, you know, should not be at the same part. So we inserted dummy here uh, for D. D is five days. And E is after B. When B is complete, we are going to put activity E. Okay. So E is five days, and F is uh, uh, ten days after C. When C is complete, F will start. Okay. So, um, like in this uh, diagram, you can see that um, all the activities are without arrow. But for dummy activity, with shown with dotted line, at dummy D one, and it must have arrows so that it show the direction. You know. Uh, direction of uh, completion so which way is dummy you know making the link because the link uh, for dummy is uh, for for d okay? that uh, d will start when a and b are complete okay so for e is uh, like predecessor activity or previous activity for e is only b but for d predecessor activity or previous activities are a and b now these three activities, uh, D, E, F, they are going to finish at the same uh, point. So they are going to finish, uh, so there is no more activity, they are going to finish at 10. So we put inside nodes as 2, uh, 4, 6, 8, 10. So this is like diagram is given. Now we are going to do uh, CPM calculations. Okay. CPM calculation that uh, we have to find uh, if that uh, in the notation given in the previous uh, slide uh, that where is uh, uh, activity and then below is duration and then we have early start early finish so let's do the forward pass and find the early start early finish for a early start for a is uh, like this is a is the starting activity zero 
and then five duration plus uh, early start plus duration is five. So similarly for B is the starting point is zero and then add uh, uh, duration finish time will be because duration is three so zero plus three is uh, uh, three so um, early finish will be three days okay. and for c is the starting time is zero which is the starting activity duration is six so it, this will take six days to complete okay. uh, then uh, let coming to the activity d so activity d is uh, like the um, there is a dummy and both A and B should finish, then D will start. Okay. So it means uh, for A activity is going to finish on day five, for activity B is going to finish on day three. So it means D will start when both will finish. Okay. Both A and B will finish. So then starting time for D will be five. And duration for D is five days. So we add a five plus five uh, early finish time for uh, D will be 10 days. Similarly, for E, activity E, so starting time will be, because E is going to start when B is finished. So B is going to finish on day three. So three will be the starting time for E and uh, duration for E is five. So three plus five is eight. So early finish for E will become eight. And then uh, for the um, for the F activity, F, uh, so uh, F will start when C is complete. So C is going to finish on day six, uh, and then starting time for F will be six, uh, plus duration for F is 10. So six plus 10 is, uh, so early finish uh, duration for uh, F will be 16 days. Okay. So now we can see that uh, D is going to finish on day 10, E is going to finish on day eight, and F is going to finish on day 16. So 16 maximum will be, this will be the project duration. Okay, this will be the project duration. And then from 16, we will come back, you know, to find the backward pass. So if we start with the, uh, you know, 16 is the project duration. So we start with B, uh, 16, uh, 16 minus this, uh, duration of D is five. So 16 minus five, we get 11. For E, is, uh, we start a uh, backward pass with the project duration is 16. 16 minus uh, duration for E is five. 16 minus five is we got 11. Okay. So uh, uh, late start time for E will be 11 and the late finish time for E will be 16. Similarly for activity F, uh, so uh, um, late finish will be 16. Minus uh, duration for F is 10 minus 10, uh, uh, 16 minus 10 is we got uh, 6. Okay. So a uh, late start time for F will be 6, 6 and late finish will be 16. Okay. Now if we come back from F to C, this, uh, this 6 uh, will come back here. So duration for C is 6, uh, 6 minus 6 is uh, starting time for C will, uh, uh, late start will come 0. But for uh, for B is so what is the for B is the um, two activities you know uh, because following uh, next activities are two you know one is E and the other is uh, uh, D okay following activities so this uh, because we are going to do the backward pass so this eleven uh, for D is also eleven E is also eleven so this eleven will come here eleven minus uh, duration of B is three so we got eight. And for A is, uh, what is the, um, from the arrow, you know, uh, um, just uh, what is the next activity for after A is only D, okay? After A is only D, so this 11 will come uh, here, uh, and uh, 11 minus five is we got uh, six. Okay, 11 minus five, we got six. Uh, and then this way we have completed the uh, backward pass. Okay, so backward pass is mean to find a um, late start and late finish time of all the activities in the network diagram is called backward pass. Okay, so forward pass was that we were finding the early start time and early finish time of all the activities in the network diagram. Okay, now uh, we are going to find the total float. Okay, total float uh, we have uh, seen in the previous slide that total float is a uh, um, late start minus early start. Okay, so late start for A is six, uh, early start is uh, is uh, zero. So we got total float. This red is uh, for A is six. Similarly for B is a uh, um, late start is eight and early start is zero. So uh, eight minus zero, we got uh, this for B is also 
total float is 8. For C, it's a late start is 0, early start is also 0, 0 minus 0 is 0. So we got total float 0. Similarly, for D, is a, we got a total float uh, is uh, 11 minus 5 is 6. For E, is uh, we have uh, late start is 11 and early start is 3. So 11 minus 3 is 8. So we got total float 8. And for activity F, uh, we got uh, uh, late start is 6 uh, and um, early start also 6. So 6 minus 6, we got 0. So now the, uh, all those activities having zero total float, they are on critical path. Okay? So only these two activities, uh, you know, uh, having total float zero is uh, C and F. Okay? So we can say that this is a critical path linking C and F. And we, are, we have shown with the orange line to make it different. Uh, so this is the critical path. So activity C and F, they are on critical path. And they have the total float is uh, zero. Okay, total float for uh, um, for critical path uh, is always zero. Okay, but total float for A is uh, uh, six days, or um, for B is also six days. Okay, so this is the like available time with the project manager. If he will delay uh, this, uh, um, you know. Uh, because six days are available with the project manager, he can delay maybe one day, two day, three day, four days. So project time will not delay. Okay, like here for D, a starting time is five, finishing is ten. So if we delay one day, starting will become uh, you know um, one day, so finishing time will be eleven. But if we delay two days, so finishing time is twelve. Okay, so until he can delay six days, then he, even then he can complete the project on time. Okay. So total time, uh, total float is the available time with the project manager that he can delay the project uh, without affecting the finish time of the project. Okay. Similarly, uh, for E, he, um, the project manager has eight days uh, um, total float. And if he, and he can delay uh, this activity also for eight days, so the finish time of the project will not affect. Like finish time is uh, 16 days. Okay. Finish time is 16 days. So similarly for B, he has the total float uh, is eight. So let's discuss now the free float first. Free float first. Free float is linked between two activities. Okay, link between two activities. Uh, like it's uh, from to find the free float from for A, we have to see what is the following activity. Next activity for A. So next activity for A is D. Okay. So then early start of uh, the following activity that is five minus early finish of the previous activity that is also five. So five minus five, by this uh, we got zero total float for A. Similarly for, uh, for activity B, for activity B, what are the following activities or next activities or successor activities? Okay. So for B, there are two successor activities, D because this arrow will take us to D, okay? D is also the successor activity. E is also the uh, successor activity or following activity. So now we have to check two times, or we should see, you know, where is the where is the uh, early start of the next activity is less. Okay. So in case of uh, this, uh, either we should uh, this uh, five minus three is uh, is two, you know, or then three minus three is zero. So, but we have to choose uh, where early start of the following activity is minimum. You no, know? so it means we should compare it with uh, not with D but with E. Okay, so um, uh, early start of B is three, minus early finish of B is also three. So three minus three, we got uh, zero total uh, free float, zero free float for B. Okay? And similarly for C is uh, like just only one following activity uh, C and F. So early uh, early start time of the uh, following activity is six, uh, like for the F. Uh, for the F uh, six minus this six is zero. Okay. Now for this uh, D, we will uh, uh, just uh, take the project duration that is 16 days. So 16 minus 10 is we got six, okay, with the blue color, all the free float. We are going to calculate free uh, float shown with the blue color. So 16 minus uh, uh, finish uh, for E is also 16 minus eight is eight. So then for uh, F is 16 minus 16 is zero, okay? So um, to, uh, free float is zero. 
Now see, it's a free float uh, is uh, is actually linked between two activities. For example, uh, uh, for B it is zero. Okay, when it's zero, it means uh, if we delay, if if we delay this, uh, uh, there is no free time. Uh, if we delay this activity, then we cannot maintain the early start time three for the next activity. So. Like here also, it's free float for D is uh, uh, six. So this we can delay also uh, for six days because there is no next activity, you know, that is going to affect. Us. So uh, this is like uh, um, free float is a link between two activities. And uh, if we want to keep for the, the excuse me, I'm in the class. So can we talk later then? Uh, okay, so uh, here it's, uh, um, you know, uh, so we have calculated all the total float and free float, uh, and to when total float is zero, so all those activities are on critical path. Okay? And uh, free float give us a link between two activities. Okay? So uh, when we go um, move forward with other activities, inshallah, things will be more clear. Uh, um, to how uh, it's uh, you know free float and total float is going to affect. Okay, let's move uh, uh, next. We are going to discuss about the node diagram. Okay, node diagram. Um, we have finished uh, uh, talking about the arrow diagram, so you need to make a practice. You know how to draw the node diagram and how to find the critical path of the node diagram. Okay. So if I go back a little bit, you know, for the critical path, uh, that critical path is always continuous from start to finish, and it is the longest path. Uh, okay. yeah, there is a, you know, no free time on this path. So it's uh, like activity C is going to start from time zero, going to finish at uh, six, uh, and next activity F is also going to start from six and going to finish on 16. So there is no free time. It, the path is always continuous, and it is the longest path in the network diagram. And it, uh, it is always from start to finish. So there could be, um, you know, one critical path in the network diagram, or um, multiple uh, parallel path also possible with the same duration. Okay, all critical path will give you the same duration of the project. Okay, and critical path is going to give us the project duration how much uh, time is required to complete the whole project uh, for uh, all the activities. Okay. So we will inshallah discuss these things uh, later. Let's come to the, the next slide is a node diagram. The time is uh, too much. Node diagram, a method of drawing network schedule using circle, square, or rectangle card loads to represent activities called activity on node or sometimes we also call these as a precedence diagrams. Okay, So general notation is that we have a box uh, and that uh, represent inside activity and then duration and they are connected with the links. Okay, uh, Links uh, we use uh, uh, to connect those uh, activities. So activity in node diagram is represented by this node. Uh, activity will be represented by those nodes and link will be just connecting um, between the connection between the activities. So this is important. So let's move forward with that. Here they, they give the example that um, here they show the label uh, and uh, duration. So uh, node A, activity A duration is two days. And when A is complete, so then we can start activity B, duration is four days, and activity C, duration is five days. So once activity A is complete, then we can start B and C. And then once uh, uh, once activity B and C are complete, uh, so we can start activity, uh, you know, both will complete, we can have activity A. Once B is complete, we can have activity D. And when, so, uh, if D, activity D and E are complete, so we can have uh, start activity F. Okay. So activity F is uh, duration eight days, like uh, activity A, duration two days, B is duration four days, and uh, D is uh, duration six days, and C is five days, E is two days, F is eight days. So this is like an example of a network uh, node diagram. 
now we will uh, draw the node diagram uh, uh, activity list is given see so activity a c b e activities are given ip list is given so if this uh, ip list is given and, uh, and like uh, immediately preceding activities are given and the uh, name of activities are given so we can draw the node diagram so now in node diagram activity is represented by the node. Okay. So A is the IP is nothing, so it means this is the starting node. Okay. So activity is generated by node, which is a starting node. B and C, both nodes, uh, both activities are after A. Okay. IP A is A, for B is IP is A, for C is A. So it means uh, when um, activity A will, uh, will complete, uh, so then B and C can start. Okay. So we put two nodes, B and C, and connect after A, connect with arrow after A, and then D is uh, after B. So node uh, activity D is uh, with the node shown, and it is after B, so we connect with the arrow after B. Then is activity E is uh, when C and D both are complete, so we can uh, have activity E. So in the space, we put the node E, and uh, it should uh, uh, it, it will start when both uh, C activity C and D are complete. So by this way, we can complete the node diagram. Okay. So node diagram is relatively uh, easy to draw. Um, activities are represented by node, and then uh, they are connected with the links. So let's move to the next example. Uh, there is a, the same list of activities as we have used in the arrow diagram. So there is a uh, activities list is given A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and uh, then IPA list is, uh, is given. Okay. IPA list is, uh, is uh, given. Mm. So then uh, IPA list is given uh, activity A, B, C, and then IPA is, uh, you know, like activity A, B, C, there is no IPA, and D is after A, E is after A and B, F is after A, B and C, and G is after E, F, and H is after D and G, and I is after D and G. Okay. So let's see as a, uh, 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 with this, uh, you know, like uh, there are three activities, A, B, C, they are the starting activities. So we put three nodes, A, B, C, they are the three nodes, and then D is after A, D is uh, after A, and activity E is when once A and B are complete. So we draw two arrows, uh, A and B, and then to put node E here. And then F is after A, B, and C. Okay, F is after A, B, and C. So it means A, B, and C. So we, we connect with C uh, from A, from B, from C, and then uh, activity F is after uh, three activities, A, B, and C. Okay. So activity G is, uh, and, uh, we draw a node G. So they, that is after E and F. So we connect uh, with E, with arrow and with F with arrow, so we, uh, that we have what E is after uh, E and F. Okay. So when E and F will finish, activity G will start. Then we have H activity, H is after uh, D and G. Okay. So we, uh, we put the H activity in space and connect it after D and then from G. Okay. So last is uh, activity I. Activity I is uh, uh, with the after uh, after uh, D and G. Okay. Uh, I is uh, after D and G. So we connected uh, with the two uh, um, that uh, D should complete and G should complete. Then I will start. Okay. So it means that this is like the diagram we have finished with the given data. Now what we see is uh, that there are three starting activities, A, B, C, okay? So in this case, there are three activities to make them that they are starting from the same point. We introduce uh, um, project start uh, node, project starting node. 
and we connect uh, all these uh, three activities with the project start uh, node, so it's with A, B, and C. Similarly, at the end, uh, it's going to finish at uh, H and I. So both activities H and I are in the space. So we uh, put uh, a finish a project uh, finish node, project finish node at the end, uh, and we connect uh, H and I at the project finish node. Okay. So this is like we have drawn the node diagram. Node diagram that start uh, or ends with more than one activity. We insert a, a project start and project finish uh, nodes by ourselves. Okay. So to make it that every project have the same starting point and same finish point. So we put uh, these uh, project start node and project finish node by ourselves. Uh, and then we do the forward pass, backward pass by keeping these things in mind that there is a one starting point and one finish point. So let's uh, move forward with the, now we are going to do the CPM calculations. Total float or float we have discussed before also. So some people call total float, okay? Yeah. Some just call it a float. Okay? So uh, when we just say float, it means total float. So it's the maximum amount of time an activity can be delayed from its uh, uh, early start without delaying the pro entire project. Okay. Maximum time, uh, uh, the maximum time an activity can be delayed uh, without uh, uh, affecting the completion uh, time of the project. Okay. So here is the same what we have done before. Total float is the late start minus early start or late finish minus early finish. Both we will get the same result. So general notation is uh, that we have the node uh, activity name, ABC activity name, activity A, and then we put the duration inside. And upper is we have early start, early finish. Okay. Early start, early finish. And then we have late start, late finish. Okay. So in this way, then we can calculate like uh, um, there is an activity F, duration is three. Then it's early start is given 11 and early finish is 14. Late start is 19, late finish is 22. Then we can calculate the uh, total float uh, if we use the uh, late start minus early start. Uh, so 19 minus 11 is equal to eight. Or uh, if we use the um, late finish uh, minus early finish uh, 22 minus 14. So we got the uh, same result. Okay, you can uh, use uh, uh, any, you know, whatever you like. Uh, if you want to use, uh, calculate the total for uh, LS minus ES or LF minus EF, you can use any one okay, as you like. So I usually use, uh, uh, you know, the late start minus early start. So let's move to the next uh, is uh, same free float, okay, free float donated by FF. Uh, it's the maximum amount of time an activity can be delayed without delaying the early start of the succeeding activity, early start of the uh, successor activity or early start of the uh, no falling activity. So this is a, like a, a free float is always a, that we have to use, a, a, you know, uh, early start uh, of the falling activity, okay, early start of the falling activity minus early finish of the previous activity. But uh, from the, uh, um, we have to use minimum uh, a minimum time that is, uh, you know, like here in this example, uh, there is activity B duration is six, activity E duration seven, activity F five. So there is a, you know, early start, uh, early start and early finish uh, is uh, is given. Uh, and then, um, so this is uh, eight minus eight, okay. So early start of minimum, we have to use the minimum, like, uh, um, you know, early, st early start of the following activity, there are two things, okay. For E, is uh, it's going to start on 8, for F, it's going to start on 12. Okay? So, because they have link from this side, so maybe this duration is coming from this side, it's, uh, um, you know, so early, early start is 12. So, from 8 and 12, we will use the minimum. Okay. We'll use the minimum set mean E will prevail, okay? uh, activity E will prevail. So this uh, early start uh, eight minus uh, early finish uh, of the previous activity is eight. So we will get zero. Okay. This is the way we calculate the uh, total four. Or you can do the uh, calculate both uh, 12 minus eight is four and eight minus eight is zero. So use the minimum. Use the minimum, so we, uh, a free float will be zero for this one. Okay, it's the 
uh, amount of time and activity can be delayed without delaying the starting time of the succeeding activity. So it's uh, free float is always less than or equal to total float. Remember this thing that uh, free float is either it should be equal with the total float or it will be less than that. Okay, it will never be more than that total float. Okay? Now we have this, uh, uh, you know, uh, activities uh, list of activities is given. Activity A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we have the predecessors. Okay, that the previous activities are I, B, A. Okay, immediately before we were writing a IP, okay, immediately preceding activity. We can also say that these are predecessors, okay, previous activities are given, okay. Activity A predecessor is nothing for B is A, for C is A, for D is A. So it means uh, B, C, D, they are starting after A, and E is starting after B and C, F is starting after C, and G is starting once uh, D, E, F are complete. And duration of these activities are also given, okay? So if this uh, uh, list is given, activities and predecessors are given, we can draw the uh, node diagram, okay? If uh, in case uh, successor activities are given, we can also draw the node diagram, okay? IP and predecessor is same, okay? But if successor is given, we can also draw the node diagram. So now with this data, it's like uh, here, we just have to draw the node diagram. So node is activity is generated by node. So activity A predecessor is nothing. So activity A duration one, we put this node A. A is one duration. Then B, C, D, they are all after A and duration are given 10, 7, 14. Okay? So B is 10, we put another node after A. So we put this arrow connected with B and C is a seven days. C is seven days. We have this node C is seven days after A and D is after A and duration is 14 days, so we connected after A. So after uh, activity B, C, D, they are all after A. This is so they are uh, after A. Now activity E is after B and C. Okay. Activity E, B and C should complete. Okay, So we put node here, E with eight uh, days duration. So after B and C, we connected with this B and C. Then F is uh, after C. F is after C, duration is five. Okay. So we put this node uh, after C. And then last is uh, G is uh, after D, E, F. So activity G, duration is one, and they are after E, uh, and after D, and after E, and after F. So this is like we have drawn the network uh, diagram, node diagram. We have drawn that node diagram with this uh, uh, activities are given, predecessor are given, so we can draw the uh, node diagram. So duration are also given, so we have put the duration inside. So the notation is like this. So we have the node, uh, node diagram with this uh, relationship, uh, okay, with uh, these arrows. So let's move forward to the uh, same uh, forward pass uh, that we have discussed before. A process to find the early start uh, time and early finish time or dates for all activities and this uh, forward pass will give us the project duration okay so it's um, we will uh, like how we'll start uh, early start date and early finish date for activity a starting time is zero duration one so one will come here when we go to the b so one will uh, starting time for b will be one day because it's after a and then duration is 10 days, so 1 plus 10 is 11 days. Okay. Similarly, for C is uh, one uh, A is going to take one day, so that one will come here. Duration for C is seven, so we add uh, seven to one. So one plus seven is eight. Okay. For D is uh, after A, so um, starting time for D is one day, and uh, duration is 14 days, so one plus 14 it becomes 15 days. By this way, we will complete the uh, you know, forward pass, okay? We'll complete the uh, forward pass. Uh, so it's uh, like here, uh, now we have uh, 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 for um, activity A, um, uh, you know, total network diagram, so zero, one, and what we have seen before is uh, for B is one, 11, for C is one, eight, for D is one, 15. Now for E, so it's uh, B and C, okay? 
So B is uh, going to complete on 11, C is going to complete on 8. So both should finish, uh, then E will start. Okay? So this prevailing uh, uh, highest duration will go the starting point for E and 11. So that is 11, 11 plus 8 is 19. And similarly, for when we come to the F, so just one activity, so 8 will be the starting point for F, plus 5 is the duration, it become 30. Okay. And then for G is, uh, so all three activities uh, are going to finish, then G will start. Okay. So E is going to finish on 19, F is going to finish on 13, and D is going to finish on 15. So highest uh, duration, uh, uh, all three should finish, then G will start. So 19 will come here, plus 120. So uh, this gives us the uh, forward pass. So, um, it gives us the project duration is 20 days. It means uh, that we have calculated uh, for all the activities early start time and early finish time. Okay? Early start time and early finish time or early start date and uh, early finish date for all the activities in the network diagram. So we, call, uh, we have finished the forward pass. Okay? To come to the backward pass, uh, so here they are, they are putting backward pass definition. A uh, process to find the late start time and late finish uh, time or late finish date for all activities. Uh, so we will uh, do the backward pass and backward pass. Uh, uh, there is a figure shown with backward pass and there is a, a figure shown also uh, shown the total quote and free quote and the critical path. Okay. So let's see is, uh, how we will start with the, with the backward pass. We will start from the end of the network diagram. So uh, last activity is G, is uh, duration is one. Uh, project duration is, uh, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, the project duration is, uh, is one. It's uh, like, uh, so project duration we have calculated 20, okay. So that 20 will come here and backward pass 20 minus project duration is 19. So late, uh, late finish date, uh, what we have the early finish date that will become the late finish date at the, for the last activity. Minus the duration is 19, so late start date, okay. So um, uh, by this way, we will complete the backward pass. So we start with 20 minus 1, 19, and then for D, 19 will come here, minus 14 is 5. When it come to the F, uh, so 19 backward pass uh, will come 19, minus 5 is 14. And then from uh, for E, so 19 will come here uh, for E, and minus 8 is 11. So now for, um, uh, for B is uh, just the following activity is just one, okay, just one, this arrow. So this 11 will come here, minus 10 is one. Okay. For C is, uh, now we have, uh, for C is two, two next activities. Okay, one is, uh, uh, one is uh, late start is uh, 11, and for the other is uh, uh, 14. 14, so uh, if E has to start with late start 11, so then uh, this minimum duration will come here. So C must finish on 11 so that E can start on 11. So meaning is that when we come back, uh, so we will take the lowest figure, okay? From 11 to 14, whatever is the lowest, uh, that will come to the C, okay? Because two activities, C has two uh, successor or succeeding activities or uh, uh, following activity. So then uh, for one is late start is 11, another one is late start is uh, uh, 14. So then minimum will come, okay, minimum will prevail so that E can also start with the 11. Okay, so it's for C, 11 will be the uh, late finish time, minus 7 is uh, 4. Uh, so then now for, for this, uh, you know, for A, so we have uh, uh, activity B, C, D, three activities, okay. Uh, B is uh, um, late start is one, for C is late start is four, for D is late start is five. So we have to choose the minimum. So one minus uh, uh, one will come here, and then one minus one, so it will be zero starting point. So usually if our calculations are good, you know, so it will be uh, that we will be reaching the same uh, uh, zero, you know. So what, by this way, we have uh, uh, calculated all the backward pass or all the uh, late start and late finish time of all the activities in the network diagram. So this is like backward pass and backward pass gave us uh, all the late start time and late finish time of all the activities in the network diagram. 
and we always start from the final last end activity and come back okay for the power pass we start with the first activity and go right way you know? uh, and for the uh, backward pass we start from the left uh, with the last activity and come back you know so then this is we have one of created the forward pass and the backward pass so here uh, in this diagram you know all the forward pass and backward pass for all activities are shown okay all the forward pass and backward pass for all activities are shown but now once we have this uh, forward pass and backward pass so they are shown like a early start early finish for each activity late start late finish for each activity they are all shown okay then we can calculate the uh, you know total float and free float so total float is same like we say that uh, um, late start minus early start so this zero minus this zero right in the middle at bottom of the activity at bottom of the activity for b is a late start uh, is uh, one and uh, uh, early start is one so one minus one is zero so we write in the middle uh, at the bottom of b and for c is also four minus one is, is three right at the bottom uh, of c is three total float and for d is total float is five minus one so it's uh, four right at the bottom of d in the middle uh, we will have the late start uh, and late uh, finish time so we write in the middle of that at the bottom of the node yeah, bottom of the node for activity e so 11 uh, is a late start and early start is also 11 so 11 minus 11 is 0 for f is a late start is 14 and early start is a, uh, 8 so 14 minus 8 is a, uh, 6 uh, then similarly for uh, activity g so 19 minus 19 we got 0 okay so now all those activities having zero total float and they are on the critical path okay so like activity a has zero total float activity b has zero total float activity c uh, e has a zero total float activity e and activity g has total float zero okay so we connect this with a double line okay you can make a thick line or double line and this will show us the critical path okay but c total float for c is three okay so this is, is not zero and similarly f is a total float is six so they are not on critical d is total float is four so they are not on critical path so only those activities having total float is zero they are on the critical path okay now we calculate the free float okay uh, free float is a link between two activities okay so uh, like um, so early start of uh, b early start of the successor activity minus early finish of the previous activity but early start of uh, successor activity we have choose the lowest okay but in this case uh, if we say a b a c a d so they all have one uh, you know uh, early start of the following is one early start of the following is one so one minus one we got zero total float from b to e okay for, from b to e just uh, for b following activity is e okay so then it's uh, 11 minus this 11 early start of the following activity 11 minus early finish of the b activity is also 11, 11 minus 11 is zero for c is uh, for c is two following activities for c is uh, there are two arrows one is E is the following activity and one is F is the following activity. So here we have to choose a minimum, you know. So early start of the following is one is 11 and other one is eight. So we will take this eight that is, you know, minimum. So eight minus eight is a zero total float. Okay. For P is like here is, you know, we have to go, what is the following activity is G, okay, 19 minus 15 is 4. Okay. So for coming to the uh, E activity, so this uh, is following activity for E is G. So 19 minus 19 is 0. And similarly for F is uh, uh, 19 minus 13. 19 minus 13 is 6. Okay. For the last activity, we will just put from the project duration. 20 minus 20 is 0. Okay. 20 minus 20 is 0. With the for the last activity project duration minus the 
early finish time uh, project duration is also 20 and early finish time also 20 so 20 minus 20 is zero okay so this is like uh, give us the uh, free free float okay now free float is uh, uh, <coughs> you know it's uh, always equal or less than the total float okay so say for example a uh, free float for c is zero okay and free float for f is uh, six so uh, it means uh, if we compare uh, because f and g what is the following activity you know free float is uh, that it will not affect the starting time of the following activity or next activity or the succeeding activity so between f and g the free float is six so project manager can delay for six days uh, or one day two days three days so then the uh, you know it's uh, uh, because it's going to finish on 13th, so then its uh, start time will not uh, affect. Okay? And but for C is uh, free float is zero, so it means as zero indicate that if we delay the activity C for one day, so that we cannot start the next activity like F on day eight because C is going to finish on eight, D is going uh, F is going to start on eight. Okay? If we delay one day C it means zero total float free float indicate that there is no free time if we start want to start the following activity f on time so there is no free time yeah so but here for d is uh, four days uh, um, free float it means we can delay this activity one day two day three day or four days uh, so then it will not affect the starting time of the following next activity successor activity because for d successor activity is g okay and D is going to finish on 15 and G is going to start on 19. So there is a four days available with the project manager that he can delay this activity without affecting the starting time of the uh, following activity. So in the total float gives the, that uh, the time available with the project manager without affecting the, without affecting the completion time of the project. So say for example, F, we compare F and G so total float we have here is uh, six days. So it means uh, here project manager, they, uh, he has six days uh, free time with him that he can delay this F activity, maybe one day, two day, and it will not affect the finish time of the project. It will not affect the finish time of the project because uh, F is going to complete on 13. So if we delay one day, it will be become, instead of 13, become 14. If we delay two days, it will become uh, 15 okay so um, if we uh, you know um, uh, we have six days uh, and then it will not affect the completion time uh, of like if we delay six days so it will be 19 so the, uh, you then can start the next activity on 19 and it will not affect the completion time of the project okay. so with this uh, we have finished this uh, all uh, you know uh, um, uh, lecture for us uh, um, how to draw the arrow diagram and node diagram and how to find the critical path. Okay. So uh, important is uh, that we have learned we will make the work data structure and duration and then uh, make the link uh, uh, and find the um, uh, you know forward pass and backward pass like we find the uh, early start, early finish time of all the activities and then find the late start, late finish time, we do the backward pass and then we find the total float and we find the free float also. So when you, all those activities having the zero total float, they are on critical path. So critical path is uh, always from uh, start to finish and it is a continuous path and there is uh, no more uh, free time available. You know, like for uh, here, if you see, a is, uh, you know, uh, starting, uh, A is going to finish on one, so B will start on one. Okay? Then B finish 11, so E will start on 11. Okay? E will finish on nine, and G will uh, start on 19. Okay? So, so, so 20 days project duration. And uh, this is always a continuous, there is no free time available on the critical path. Okay? Uh, so, but uh, the, for the other activities, uh, the total float is, is, uh, is more than, so they, there is a free time available with the project manager that uh, uh, they can, uh, you know, delay for those activities for a couple of days, whatever is given uh, total float, and it will not affect the completion time of the uh, project. So 
free float is li linked between two activities. It will tell us uh, whether we can delay the starting time of the successor activity or we cannot delay the starting time. Okay. If free float is available with us, we can uh, delay and it will not affect the starting time of the successor activity. So with this, uh, we have all uh, you know uh, finished for today's uh, lecture. Inshallah, in the second part, we will discuss a little more in detail uh, these things. Uh, and uh, we will come with the relationship scheduling. Uh, so like here, uh, all the activities was uh, that uh, activity A should finish, then B will start. Activity A should finish, then C will start. If A will finish, then B will start. Okay, a link was always uh, uh, between from finish to start. Okay, uh, all links were finish to start, finish to start. Okay, the link between node diagram. But in the next, uh, we will uh, discuss the relationship schedule that is uh, as we work with the Pramavira. So it will have a relationship, maybe finish to start, maybe start to start, maybe, uh, uh, you know, um, finish to finish relationship. So there will be multiple relationship uh, we are going to discuss uh, in the next uh, lecture, inshallah. Um, and uh, also we will deal with the uh, calendar, you know, setting the calendar uh, uh, because this uh, duration 20 days is working time for this project. Okay, 20 days duration is the working time for this project. So for uh, from activity A to G, it's uh, we need 20 days working uh, days. Okay, and when we put the with the calendar days, so it then uh, it means uh, a weekend, uh, uh, Saturday or Sunday or Friday or Saturday. So they will also be included. You know. So how it's going to link, we will discuss uh, how it's going to link with the calendar days, inshallah, in the next time. So with this, we are going to finish, inshallah, we have used a lot of time. And uh, so before finishing, uh, allow me to say, subhanakallah, Thank you very much for your attention.